The best part of waking up is French toast in your gut. Yeah. Trying to watch YouTube this morning while I'm having my breakfast and every video I load is giving me a playback error. Thought it was my browser, so I tried that new Chrome Edge, whatever the hell they're calling it, Edge Chromium. That came with the last update of Windows 10. And that's not working any better, same playback error. So I don't know if it's a problem on YouTube or if it's a problem with my filters. At first I thought the issue with YouTube AdSense was maybe the Pi Hole acting up. See, Pi Hole doesn't block YouTube uh, video ads. It'll block ads on uh, like websites like The Guardian and all that and Facebook when they put up the little spammy ads, but it won't block YouTube rolling ads. So, and the, the company Piehole purposely did that to basically make money on YouTube with their tutorials on how to set up Piehole because Piehole is open source and it's free. All right guys, 10.30, first break of the day. Forgot to upload my video. Whoops, that went live now, so that's fine. That's one of the problems when I do the bike videos if I do the jump cuts in between scenes, it's not too bad for rendering, but when I just take all the footage, compress it in, speed it up, and let it rip, yeah, that makes for a long render. So yeah, today's a busy day. It's also nice though that the heat wave shit is over. Like it's currently 18 degrees out, and it's actually tolerable. Like it's pretty bad when I actually had to close a window in my computer room because I was getting kind of chilly. I almost thought about putting another shirt on. Just spent all morning looking up spots to fish, <laughs> trying to get some ideas. I know the um, boat launched right down here. Like it literally would take me by a bike, three minutes to get to, and I could just pack my gear in the bike, grab a bag too, and my pliers and all my fishing shit, and we could go for a fishing rip down at the uh, Armstrong Beach there. Stand on the dock and just cast off and see if we can catch anything. That could be kind of fun. I don't know if I'm going to do that tonight or not. Uh, I do got a workout tonight. I'm still sticking to my workout schedule. Even though in T minus... How many? Yeah, there's 31 days in July. Um, so T minus 18 days. All hell breaks loose in the biking world. Where I got to do 700... I, basically, right now the mileage on my bike, I'm going to double it. All the miles I put on my bike since I started using Strava, I'm gonna double that in a month. So I, I fixed up a lot of the, a lot of the problems. Uh, the past two bike rides I've done, the one on Thursday, Thursday. I, I think it was Thursday when I went out last on the bike. Maybe Friday. I can't remember. But um, that bike ride was uh, flawless, no problems. Didn't get a single single issue. No squeaks, no chirps, no slowdowns. I do need a tire pump. I think my PSI is getting a little low. Uh, I do want to run the tires hard -er than normal. Um, I know it's a fat bike, you're supposed to run the tires soft, but it's not winter. I'm riding it on the street, so a little bit of harder will help with the rolling resistance. Uh, so I'm probably gonna bring them back up to 20 PSI. They're sitting probably around 15 now, which you're probably thinking is low for a bike, but for a fat bike, that's probably still a bit high. I know it's no good for the winter. Um, but yeah, I don't really dirt ride it and stuff. I just street ride it. So, but I do want it a little bit harder. Maybe not too hard. Actually, I might just leave it alone. Because when I do the Powassan run, there's a good stretch of it that's all gravel road. So I might want the tires to be a little bit softer to mold around the gravel versus trying to resist against it and getting a puncture. But I did find these really cool tires uh, or inserts for tires on um, oh, Frig Amazon, where they're basically a run flat system so that if you do get a puncture, you're not screwed. Like you can actually get somewhere safe where you can work on the bike rather than being on the side of a busy road trying to put a new inner tube on or patch up your current tube you can just run the tire flat and it's like rolling on like for instance for the fat bike it'd be like being permanently on 10 psi so you'd have a lot of resistance drag but at least you weren't you know immobilized you can get the bike places it would just take a lot more oomph and by the time you're done you would have massive quads but hey it is what it is i don't know if i would get it i might later on down the road and it's really cool. It's like, a, it kind of looks like a pool noodle, to be honest. It's like this really rigid foam with an insert for your tube. So your tube still works with it to provide 
air to ride on, but if the tube is punctured, then the system will, like you don't end up rolling on a tire, wrecking your tire and rim. You actually have something to roll against. So I don't know, cool concept. I'm liking a lot of the bullshit coming up for bikes lately. A lot of neat, neat gadgets. Also got thinking about my uh, camping stove predicament. You know how I was uh, like, oh, I'm just gonna buy one on Amazon. You know what? I'm just gonna buy that $29 freaking camping stove from Walmart or Canadian Tire. They both are pretty much the same. They're all made by probably the same Chinese distributor and branded by whoever buys them. You know, there's like the Outbound at uh, Walmart or at Canadian Tire, which is the same brand as the air mattress I bought. And then at uh, Walmart, it's like a Woods brand but they both look exactly the same, do the exact same thing, have the exact same way to run. There's nothing different about them. So I figure who cares who gets it? $29 single burner runs on a butane tank and those butane tanks are good for one point, oh, about, about 90 minutes. Who the hell spends 90 minutes cooking a meal, right? You heat up your frying pan, you throw your shit in it, you cook it up, turn the damn stove off, half an hour top so if you get three meals out of it then how often am i going to be camping i can't camp during the week i'm i'm working so it's like you oh saturday i'll go out set up tent sunday come home you know uh one of those now i know my friend and i were supposed to go down out to um she knows a place where her and her brother used to camp and it's crown land so there's no cost now in ontario you can camp on crown land from what i read online up to 21 days in a year not 21 consecutive days 21 total days so let's say i go out saturday come back sunday theoretically 21 days it's like 21 weekends <laughs> so if i were to go out saturday and they don't really keep count they just don't want people like monopolizing zones like or setting up permanent structures and, and turning it into cottage country you know on crown land they just want people to go out enjoy nature enjoy the wilderness and then get the freak out of there so other people can enjoy the nature and wilderness unlike the people who took over our spot on the beach where we fish who are literally there all day every day because they're bored out of their mind because they're currently unemployed due to the pandemic I don't know, my friend mentioned a couple spots where she's like, hey, we can probably try and fish here and fish here. And like I said, I'm going to try Armstrong, see what kind of guppies I pull out of the lake there. And I was looking at some other spots that look like you're going to need to do some serious bushwhacking to get to. You know, it'll be, it'll be all right come August when the shad flies are done. And it's just mosquitoes that we got to worry about. Because uh, right now the problem is, is with the shad flies, it's not that they're disgusting or anything. Well, they are, but because they just swarm you. But it, the main issue is that the fish are feeding off of them so they're less interested in your bait which makes lake nipissing kind of a shit lake to fish out of right now so uh just around the corner for me though i got like two lakes just around the corner for me like i got lake armstrong down there uh the cove which i brought you guys to and then just around the corner from the cove there's uh, Circle Lake, which is another lake. Now, people have said the fish out of Circle Lake, you should probably not eat them due to pollution. I don't know if that's still a thing. A lot of people said that the Circle Lake is kind of gross. I don't know what pollution there is in there, but I thought that was a pretty thriving ecosystem, but you know, it's been a while. I remember we never swam in that lake as a child because there was problems in it uh, with pollutions and other contaminants, but uh, Oh no, it was high in algae that would give you the itch. That's what it was. It was an algae issue. <clears throat> so, but yeah, I looked up on anglers and there's a lot of people who fish that lake and say they pull a lot of grass pike out of there and perch. And perch is a delicious fish if you ever had perch. I do appreciate it's a good perch, so. I don't know, I don't know. I'm gonna have to go fishing one of these days. I gotta fix my, my rod though. Gotta tie up a new, uh, I'm gonna tie up one of those clips using that, uh, that knot that uh, struck has showed me. See how well that works. Get that all situated. And then, I don't know, one of these nights maybe we'll head down to Armstrong and cast off there. And I remember uh, at the cove where we were, if you, uh, you can go around one side 
up on the rocks and you can cast off between the cove and Camelot Lake. Lake Camelot, whatever. Oh, I've been doing that all morning. And you can, there's like a river there. And I know there's people pulling bass out of it, like largemouth and smallmouth. A lot of rock bass too. But you can also pull the odd uh, pike out of that river too. So yeah, we can just need more weekends. But now we're on half day freaking Friday. Except for this Friday. This Friday's kind of cocked because like I said, I got my interview at 5. So this Friday I will be preoccupied. But this weekend coming up, we can go do some fishing and some, some other stuff. Some other stuff and things. But yeah, I think I'm just going to get that $29.99 butane stove. For the amount I'm going to use it, and and the cost of gas and apparently you can actually outrig them with a propane tank you just got to buy the adapter and you hook it up and away you go that could be a possible conversion in the future for the time being running some simple butane during the summer months just to cook a simple meal at a campsite good enough good stuff you know if we were not allowed to have fires then that's fine we'll just butane stove it who cares so yeah Anywho, my break is almost done. I just came downstairs to get some steps in because I haven't done shit today. And uh, the 987 calories that I burnt totally show that because I can't run my stepper because it's too damn busy right now for me to even get out of my desk. So that's super fun and exciting for the whole damn family. All right, guys. I'll talk to you in a bit. All right, guys. Normally, I don't bother doing lunch, but I'm doing lunch today. Like I uh, usually I take like 3:15, but I've been busy working all morning, and I've only taken one lunch break today or one uh, break today, and that was the one when I last videoed. Then I came downstairs to have a quick piss, and I threw a steak and some hash browns in the air fryer, which I'm going to eat for my lunch. Wonder how much this steak weighs. <laughs> I love it. 145 grams for the steak, and then you weigh it, and it can, it's like. Nope, it's a 78 gram steak. It's the problem when you buy in bulk. Not exactly, it was probably 145 grams before it was cooked, but after cooking it, it became a lot less. So, also for dinner tonight, I'm gonna do hamburgers because I, why, why not? And by hamburgers, I mean turkey burgers, like I did all last week. That's what we're doing tonight. It's gonna be freaking awesome. But my burger meat is frozen, so I usually fire it in a sink with water. Use cold water, don't use hot water. I'm gonna let it sit in there. It'll transfer the heat out quicker. That has to be the saddest meal you ever did see in the history of meals. Literally spent all morning researching knots because obviously I need to learn how to do a better knot to tie up jigs on my line. And I got a couple to try. Surprise, surprise, it's actually sunny out right now. Maybe tonight I'll be able to get my workout in. Maybe after the workout, see how we feel. Maybe we'll take a rip down to Armstrong, go try and catch some guppies. Well guys, I just realized something. I have a webcam to webcam interview this Friday and I look like this. I don't really want to look like this for that webcam to webcam, so thinking probably Wednesday or Thursday we're going to shave this sea sucker off because I'm number one sick and tired of it. I don't know how people can grow beards and enjoy it. I don't know. It's, I find it's itchy and annoying. I thought the itchy would go away. It does sometimes then it comes back with a mad vengeance. So I'm going to chop that thing off. Try and look somewhat respectable for my interview because I kind of really want this job because it pays a lot more than my current job. However, I don't know if you guys heard, but uh, Uncle Dougie just moved Ontario, except for Toronto and Greater Toronto Area, up to uh, stage or phase three of reopen, which means a lot of businesses are now going to be reopening in the very near future, including restaurants and hotels and all sorts of shit. Social distancing will still apply, and in enclosed businesses, you're allowed to have up to one third of your legal capacity. So if you can have 150 people in there, you're allowed to have 50 people in there. So it's up to 50 people in a business. So restaurants will be opening back up for in-house dining and movie theaters will be opening back up with social distance seating and whatever. All I know is I'll still be working from home. 
Because I told the boss, I'm like, why bother going back in? You know, I literally just canceled my my uh, freaking parking. And then now this. So I don't want to go back into the office because I don't see the point. I can do my job from home. It saves me money on parking. And I don't have to deal with the distractions of the office. And you'd be surprised the distractions of the office. Because there are some people in our office environment who are not doing IT work. And all they do is freaking talk all day. And it's like, shut up, I'm trying to get my job done. I digress. Like in the long run, it would save the company a lot of money by letting us just stay the way we are now, working from home. They wouldn't have to rent the office. They wouldn't have to pay hydro for the office. And they wouldn't have to pay to the HVAC for the office. So no AC charges in the summer, no heating in the winter. They wouldn't have to pay for network. There's just so much benefit to save money for us just to stay home. And then for us staying home, we get to write off our internet as a tax write-off because we're using it for work. We get to write off a our uh, portion of our hydro, a portion of our heating, a portion of our internet, I already think I said that, a portion of your rent or your mortgage because now it's a business expense. You know, all sorts of these different write-offs for your taxes because you're now using your shit for business. That wasn't its intent, I guess. I don't know how, why you get to do that. I'm not an accountant. But all I know is in the long run, I get to write all this shit off and I would get one hell of a tax return come April, 2021. Enough to say, even if I'm working at the same job, I could probably afford to take a week off, not worry about the lack of pay. I'm making burgers, but I think I made them too big. Yeah, like one of the heads doesn't even cover the burger. This is going to be a great burger. I'm excited. All right, bony petite, it's time to go eat. Two chicken burgers where the patty is bigger than the burger. And that's how it should always be. Guys, got you on the chest mount on the GoPro Hero 4. And I think we're going to go for a quick little fishing rip. According to uh, Google. See there, you guys can see me. Hi, no hands free. Okay, Google says it's not going to rain tonight. I'm going to take our word for it is go to the garage and tie off a jig or something on my line. We're gonna go down to the, the park around the corner. Not much fish there, mostly sunfish, the odd bass. I just wanna get some more experience catching fish, so why not? You never know, you might catch the odd grass pike, which could be worrisome. But I figure, why not end the night on a fishing note? Could be fun. All right, I'm gonna tie off this line and I'll be with you in a moment. Holy crap, guys, I didn't realize I left this damn thing running the whole time. Anyway, I tied off a jig and it's a good thing I didn't leave yet because holy crap, I had to crap. So I went in the house and crapped, that's great. I am the worst fisherman in the world, but I'm really having fun. Da -cha -cha. All right, so now I gotta break this rod down to its primal form and then shove this in the pannier. <laughs> this is my first time doing this, guys. Well, not my first time loading the rod in here. Maybe we tested it out the other day to see how it would work and we we're like, yay, we can go fishing with our bike. We're stupid. So, let's be stupid and go bike fishing. How bad does that stick out? That's not too bad. That shouldn't hit me at all. Is that up? All right, yeah, that's in there. Okay, so let me get this phone into the thingamajigger here. I don't need to turn on Strava to record the whopping kilometer I'm about to travel. Uh, what do I need out of here? Let's grab this, grab this. This has got plenty of juice left in it. You know what? Just in case we catch a guppy that's worthwhile, let's grab a bag here. Because you never know, we might catch dinner for tonight. Or Screw that, we might catch breakfast for tomorrow. I'm just gonna, this thing's off, yes. Put that in there, put that glove in there. We don't really need any beverage. We're not going that far, it's not like we're marathoning it. All right, let's go ahead and hit the road. You know, it's honestly times like this that I wish I didn't get rid of that uh, telescopic rod. That rod was apparently really weird and wouldn't have done me any good, so whatever. All right, I got you guys hooked up to the battery pack on my chest mount, just cause. 
All right. Let's go. It's a little rocky though, so maybe I shouldn't have the bike out here. Yeah, maybe that's what I'll do. I'll back the bike up to where the dock isn't rocking, just for safety purposes. Because I really don't feel like jumping in the water in my jeans to go get it. All right. Like I said, not a long bike ride to get to here, but it's a spot where we can practice fishing and uh, it's close to home. Oh, and there's nobody else here now because that mother and her kid just left, so sweet. Rig that up and I fixed it all right so I hope I got that jig head on there right guess we'll find out in the near future ah, shit all right so I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of line good enough So many damn kids running around, it's like... Let's hope while I'm fishing they don't come over here and start playing with the bike, because... This friggin' bike attracts some serious attention. Nice crossberries right now. So, that's alright. Alright. It's like this little lunch pail pack thing here is meant for, uh... Storing tackles. So what we'll do, I got one of these little minnow jobbies. Let's uh, stick one of these guys on the hook. See if that works out. Let's uh, scuba duba. Man, this thing's coming apart. Did I already use this one? Like, do I have another one in there? I got a couple of them in there. I'll just leave it as it is. All right, guys. Let's get out there for our first cast at a new location. And hope to Christ, this friggin' it should stay on there. It should stay on there. Of course, I'm hooked on everything on my bike. All right, let's go ahead here and reel this up a little bit. I don't see any signs saying no fishing, so fish on.
Let's see how this goes. Ooh. No way. Something friggin' with me? Oh no, it's just snagged. No way. I think it's just really weedy here. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's very weedy here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's uh there's a lot of plant life down there. Holy crap, this this dock is not exactly the the most sturdiest thing to fish from, that's for sure. But um Yeah, she's pretty weedy out here, boys. Pretty, pretty weedy. So, probably don't want to go too deep. You also probably want to send it. Yeah, we're dragging a lot of weeds. beach staff right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, look, we caught we caught salad. Totally caught salad. <laughs> oh shit. be a good time to fish guys. I'll uh, check back in in a bit. Alright guys, we uh, fished for a little bit, but they're not biting. I'm just dragging weeds. It's too freaking shallow there. I didn't realize it was that bad. I thought it was a little deeper, but turns out I thought wrong. The only other place I can think around here to go fishing that I might be able to get to by fat bike is at the cove. And we went there that one time and like it was okay but we never went fishing there. I just took you guys there. But it's already almost eight o'clock. I didn't want to get out this late. I wanted to get out a little sooner. But yeah, literally I'm dragging weeds. Like as soon as I cast, and I could start reeling in the moment the, the lure hits the water and we're pulling grass. So I don't think that would be a good spot to catch anything right now. So, let's uh, head back home. And we'll just enjoy the rest of the night. Somebody really needs to bushwhack this. See if I had a boat, I could just launch it right there. Right where that uh, friggin' thing was. The Sea Dew and the other boat. Holy crap. Get your animals off the road.
All right, guys. <clears throat> that was a good little rip. Just a little bike ride to the cove and back. Or cove. To the Armstrong Beach and back. Get this thing back in the, in the garage. Oh, that's lovely. <coughs> good thing that wasn't hanging there when I was riding because that would have been inside of the GoPro on my chest. All right. Well, I'm just gonna leave things like that for now. I should grab my phone. Kinda sorta need that to wake me up in the morning. Look, I think somebody missed me. Oh, it's campers. <sighs> She's so upset. Oh, it's campers face. Did you miss me while I was gone for 20 minutes? That was about an hour. I do have to say, I love how that GoPro 4 sounds for audio wise. Just pulling the data off the camera is a bit of a pain in the ass, but holy shit, does that thing ever sound so much better than the GoPro uh, Hero Session? Yes, guys, I got white wife beaters now. Look at me go. So, um, what am I doing? I don't need to bring that down there. I'm gonna make a pack of popcorn, some Smart Pop because I think I'm gonna have some popcorn and do some editing and then get to bed at a decent hour tonight because tomorrow is another work day and then Wednesday is live chat, Thursday is live chat, Friday is half day freaking Friday, then the weekend is here and it's time for more fun and exciting things. Also, I should mention I found a pump on Amazon that I ordered up for the uh, air mattress. So that's been taken care of. I also ordered up a, no, that's all I ordered. Yeah, I didn't bother buying the stove yet. Um, because I'm gonna buy that local, because I decided, you know what, the butane stoves, they're fine. And I looked up on YouTube, uh, somebody quickly converted it over with an adapter from Amazon and literally the adapter just screws onto the uh, where the, the butane goes and the hose runs out the back and you plug it into a green propane cylinder and away you go. Now you have a propane stove. So, But those butane uh, canisters, apparently they're good for like two hours, an hour and a half, two hours. So if I go camping three times, that's one cylinder and you can get a four pack of those for 12 bucks. So three dollars, a dollar, a half an hour, or a dollar a meal to heat it up. You know what? That's good. And who's to say that I'm going to use it? If there's no fire ban, then make a freaking campfire and cook on the fire. Like come up with a fire meal or something. You know, could work. Could be fun. Could be exciting. Have to wait and see. I have to wait and see what we do. Don't have to use the stove. If we can use other means, we'll use other means. But. I'm a little excited for camping. Like I said, I haven't been camping since I was eight, maybe 10. I don't know. Last time my parents took us to Champlain Park and I can't remember when the hell that was. So I know it was a long, long freaking time ago. And I know every year the office group, they try to plan a trip out to Mattawa to Champlain Park for a, uh, a camping trip. I just, I don't like mixing business with pleasure. I don't think it's a good practice. It's fine to go to a company Christmas party and hang out with your co-workers, but if you do that, you kind of don't want to get drunk and stupid because they're going to remember that. You know, you want to keep your composure the whole freaking time because, uh, yeah, yeah, getting hammered around management and letting them see the true you is probably not a good idea. But luckily, I don't drink anymore, so I don't have that freaking problem, so... I would just end up going out there drinking near beer and sleeping in the back of my truck. Apparently last year when they went, one of the guys got so drunk he fell into a wheelbarrow and slept there all night. Uh, another person, they went to cook their steak, they literally flash fried it. As in they put it on the barbecue, flipped it, took it off and just ate it. They must have just opened the package and eat it. Um, somebody got so sick they puked on the fire, so that's exciting. Yeah, uh, I, I don't... Because I don't drink anymore, I don't know if I want to be around that level of stupidity. So that and you don't hang out with coworkers like that. Like I never wanted to associate with coworkers like that 
for the simple reason that you don't. You know, you don't mix business with pleasure. Same reason why you don't date co-workers. There's a lot of things that uh, I have simple rules for in the business environment and I have them for a reason because I breached them in the past and reaped the consequences. It wasn't a good time. But anyway people, I'm going to shut down this vlog here, get this all edited and rendered up for tomorrow. So anyway, on that note, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, click the like button. Any questions, comments, concerns down below that going on. Until next time guys, stay safe and peace the freak out. Sit, stupid, sit. Good dog.